Uh, again, I think this is an aggravating factor um, as any individual, regardless of age, who could be persuaded by another classmate to kill his teacher is a danger to the community and will require significant rehabilitation. The degree of participation in the murder by uh, you, Mr. Goodell, is the next factor. And I find that you knowingly participated in the murder of Nohima Grammer and by your own admissions hit the victim with a baseball bat five times using legal, lethal force. While Mr. Miller concocted the plan without your help, the execution of that plan would not have occurred. So I find this as an aggravating factor and I don't, I don't think you have the same culpability as Mr. Miller. I think it's, it's less, but still without your help, he couldn't have done it. The nature of the offense is heinous. As, as you can imagine, it's a significant aggravating factor. Uh, Ms. Graber was killed in a brutal fashion by two of her own students. This murder requires the defendant to serve a prison sentence for deterrence of the entire community, not just the defendant. And for context, I think it's important to distinguish some of the facts from this case involving you and Willard Miller to uh, Miller versus Alabama, which is the U.S. Supreme Court case that uh, Dr. Cunningham has brought in to testify about and what we've had this last two days of hearing. The reason for the individualized Miller sentencing hearing is because while juveniles are different than adults, each juvenile and his or her acts are inherently different. Um, so I don't think, I am not comparing you just to a lump of Miller, of defendants that have had Miller hearings. Miller versus Alabama involved a 14-year-old defendant who assisted another juvenile in a robbery that resulted in a shooting. The defendant in Miller versus Alabama did not fire a gun or swing a bat. In a 6-3 decision, the United States Supreme Court found that the Eighth Amendment ban on cruel and unusual punishment provided or prevented automatic life without parole uh, sentences for juvenile offenders. That's why we're having this, sent this hearing. And subsequent 4-3 Iowa Supreme Court cases went further to take away the district court's ability to sentence a murderer under 18 to life without parole. So in spite of the mitigating factors presented by um, your defense through Dr. Cunningham, other testimony, and presentation of evidence and argument, the court finds a prison sentence and a mandatory minimum is required for deterrence for the defendant and others from committing murder in the first degree. As U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice Roberts wrote in his Miller dissent, our Eighth Amendment cases have also said that we should take guidance from evolving standards of decency that mark the progress of a maturing society. Mercy toward the guilty can be a form of decency, and a maturing society may abandon harsh punishments that comes to view that it comes to view as unnecessary or unjust. But decency is not the same as leniency. A decent society protects the innocent from violence. A mature society may determine that this requires remove, removing those guilty of the most heinous, heinous murders from its midst, both as protection for its other members and as a concrete expression of its standards of decency. As judges, we have no basis for deciding that progress toward greater decency can move only in the direction of easing sanctions of the guilty. With respect to your remorse, Mr. Goodell, and unlike your co-defendant, it's clear to me that you have regretted this rule in Ms. Graber's murder. Um, you've been remorseful for these proceedings, and this is a mitigating factor. Factor G is your acceptance of responsibility. This is another mitigating factor, Mr. Goodell. You pled guilty to first degree murder and acknowledged your actions. While you certainly have the right to exercise your constitutional rights through trial to a jury in a different place, um, like Mr. Miller, by pleading guilty, you spared the 
defendant's family, witnesses, and community a traumatic trial. And while these Miller sentencings uh, itself uh, are emotionally draining for all involved, and I doubt either Supreme Court's spent much time thinking about that toll uh, before ordering us to do hundreds of these hearings, the U.S. Supreme Court requires them. You're entitled to it. And uh, I certainly um, am required to do my job and your attorneys have done their job very well in uh, presenting evidence. Regarding the severity of the offense, which is factor H, including any of the following, um, the commission of the murder while participating in another felony, a number of victims, and the heinous, brutal, cruel matter of murder, including whether the murder was the result of torture. I mentioned the, the offense is heinous, unusually heinous and cruel. Uh, by stalking uh, Miss Graber and repeatedly hitting her with a bat. Again, I am in, I'm required to find that aggravating as a factor. There's one murder victim here, but many have felt the lasting effects, including yourself, of your actions and Mr. Miller's actions. Regarding your capacity to appreciate the criminality of your conduct, I am required, and I, and I do consider your mature and developing brain in this sentencing hearing required by the U.S. Supreme Court and the Iowa Supreme Court. The defendant agreed to participate in a plan, Mr. Um, Miller and Mr. Goodale did, to kill uh, Nohema Graber and willful and premeditated murder is what resulted. You were 16 years old and the law treats you as an adult for the purposes of prosecution, but as uh, not as an adult for sentencing. And you have expressed genuine remorse that I did not see from your co-defendant. And this factor and the capacity to appreciate the criminality of your conduct, I think is a mitigating factor. You stated that you um, never thought about the consequences. And I believe you when you say that. Uh, when you agreed to help Willard Miller kill uh, Miss uh, Noah McRaper. The next factor is whether the ability to conform with the defendant's conduct with the requirements of law was substantially impaired. And uh, you didn't have any prior referrals to juvenile court services. And certainly uh, your mother's abandoning um, you and your family at a young age could have resulted in youthful misbehavior. It's not clear to me if you were under the influence or impaired when the murder was committed, though you were using marijuana. And I, I find this as a, as a mixed factor, um, but generally a mitigating factor. And then going to the level of maturity of you, Mr. Goodale, again, I think this is a mitigating factor based on the evidence presented the while you were older than, than Mr. Miller, and um, it was clear to me that you were not more mature than him, and that Mr. Miller was far more sinister in his planning and the execution of this crime. Both the United States Supreme Court and the Iowa Supreme Court have held that juveniles are constitutionally different from adults for the purposes of sentencing, and that's Miller versus Alabama and State versus Sweet. Um, 879 Northwest 2D811, that's an Iowa 2016 case. Mr. Goodell, you did not fully appreciate the consequences of your actions, but the analysis of maturity does not end there. While you were naive and immature, you aided Mr. Miller in, in murdering Noah McGraber. As everybody talked about, you knew the difference between right and wrong. Um, you were a bright student and still are a bright individual. And you could have stopped this from happening and you know that. And that's probably gonna be the hardest thing for you to live with. Regarding the next factor, which is the intellectual and mental capacity of the defendant, I think this is a mitigating factor. Your youth and lack of fully formed brain limited your capacity to appreciate the consequences of your acts. And while you were a very bright 16 and a half year old uh, without a history of violence, I, I do find that to be a mitigating 
with respect to the nature and the extent of any prior juvenile delinquency or criminal history, um, I think this is a mitigating factor because I don't, uh, no evidence that to my knowledge you were a pre previous criminal history and you are a good candidate for rehabilitation. And I think time will tell, but you'll be far more successful than Mr. Miller. The mental health history of the, of the defendant, and I didn't know about this until I read Ms. Dr. Cunningham's report of an undiagnosed ADHD and marijuana abuse um, in that 72 page evaluation. And prior to the report, I, I was unaware that an undiagnosed mental health may have uh, affected this crime. But this was the first criminal offense you were adjudicated for, so I think that that is a mitigating factor. The next factor, which is letter O, is the level of compulsion, duress, or influence exerted upon the defendant, but not to such extent as to constitute a defense. So this is a mitigating factor to the extent that co-defendant Willard Chayden Miller influenced you to commit this crime. However, you could have notified law enforcement any time during the planning stages. Mr. Miller did not threaten you if you didn't assist him. There's no, you weren't protecting yourself in doing this. And certainly it's not a defense to assert peer pressure as why a defendant commits first degree murder. So while there's mitigation in this factor, there's also some aggravation as well. Letter P is the likelihood of the commission of further offenses by the defendant and um, while there's no precise algorithm in determining whether you're going to commit any further offenses, Mr. Goodell, um, when you're released from incarceration, I do hope that you'll have time to reflect on your actions and grow as a person in prison, and I don't think there will be any other choice for you. And I said earlier, you're a good candidate for rehabilitation, and you appear generally remorseful um, for this terrible act, which, um, is refreshing compared to the last sentencing, though it's it's just brutal for everybody to have to hear about this again. It really is for everybody. Uh, Q is the chronological age of the defendant and the features of youth, including immaturity, impetuous city, and the failure uh, to appreciate risks and consequences. This is a mitigating factor uh, that you were a minor when you committed this crime. The law treats you as an adult for the prosecution, but um, I am to consider your immaturity um, and failure to appreciate risks and consequences in, de in determining your appropriate sentence. You didn't appreciate the consequences of your actions, but that does not bring Nohema Graber back here. And uh, your age and, and remorse are actually, I thought they would be less a comfort to Miss um, Graber's family, but it appears that it is of some comfort, at least to, to some. regard to the family and home environment uh, with your circumstances, Mr. Goodell, and again before this week, I didn't really know much about that. Um, certainly your home life was not the same since your mother left. While you have a complicated uh, relationship with your father, he does care for you and so do your siblings. Your home life may have been atypical, but you were not a troublemaker prior to the tragic events of November 2nd, 2021. I find this to be a mitigating factor. Letter S is the circumstances of the murder, ex including the extent the defendant's participation and the conduct and way familial and peer pressure may have affected the defendant. Uh, this is a mitigating factor to the extent Mr. Uh, Miller was the driving force behind the murder of Ms. Graber. But as I said earlier, Mr. Miller couldn't have done with this without you, Mr. Goodell. There's no family influence on the murder. 
in a perverse way, you did feel peer pressure. Uh, but this was not cheating on a math test. Uh, this was the premeditated murder of a human being because Mr. Miller did not like his grade. Letter T has me consider the competencies associated with youth, including but not limited to the defendant's inability to deal with peace officers or the prosecution or the defendant's incapacity to assist the defense attorney and defendant's defense. Uh, this is a mitigating factor due to your uh, lack of prior contact to law enforcement. Um, and I will say that uh, you were represented by um, experienced and talented attorneys who zealously advocated uh, for your rights. Um, say the statement about the state just to, to keep it uh, fair, but um, in considering that factor, um, certainly you had the benefit of, of excellent legal representation. The possibility of rehabilitation uh, is a significant mitigating factor. You're a very good candidate for rehabilitation. While incarcerated, you'll be able to take advantage of the programming and education in the Iowa prison systems. Uh, when paroled, uh, hopefully you'll have the skills to be a productive and law-abiding member of society based on the record of this case and of the record of, of Mr. Miller's case, because I learned uh, somewhat about you in that case as well, and then the evidence presented on your behalf here and at other hearings. Letter V, uh, is any information uh, considered relevant by the sentencing court? And as I've stated, uh, the, the U.S. and Iowa Constitution treats juveniles differently um, than adults at sentencing. Um, I think this was mentioned earlier, but if, if, if you had helped Mr. Miller uh, 18 months later, you'd be uh, in prison for the rest of your life. So I hope that is not lost either. Uh, I believe the bedrock of our criminal justice system remains the same, and that's deterrence and rehabilitation. I've considered your youth and developing brain, along with your intent and actions, which I think were cruel. In State versus Majors, which is a 2020 Iowa Supreme Court case, 940 Northwest 2nd, 372, Iowa Supreme Court Justice Waterman wrote that, quote, our earlier opinions have been criticized for running the risk of making it difficult, if not practically impossible, for a sentencing judge to ever impose a minimum term of incarceration. Yet, as we indicated in Roe v, mandatory minimum sentences are permissible. While there is a presumption against mandatory terms of incarceration for juvenile offenders, we have expressly upheld, even commanded, their use if the court concludes that sentence is warranted after consideration of the factors. And uh, Mr. Goodell, I believe because sentencing judges are in a unique position to deter homicidal and other violent behavior. Um, while it may seem natural for a judge from Iowa to punt, uh, in this case to the parole board, um, I don't think the parole board is adequate uh, in its function that I have and the obligation and the oath that I take to protect the community. And I believe judges at the district court level and the trial court level are much better positioned to order criminal sentences than the parole board. Court finds based on the nature and circumstances of this defense along with the 25 required factors I'm required to consider in sentencing a juvenile for first degree murder, the defendants shall be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 25 years the sentence is permissible under current Iowa law. The presumption against mandatory minimum sentences has been rebutted by the nature of circumstances of this case. And it represents the appropriate time of incarceration based on the defendant's premeditated murder. Count two of this case will be dismissed pursuant to plea agreement. Mr. Goodell, do you agree to pay the dismissal costs on the conspiracy charge? Okay. 
The Iowa, the Iowa Medical and Classification Center in Oakdale is designated as a reception center to which you're to be, be delivered by the Sheriff of Jefferson County or his designee. Again, you're given all credit for time served on this charge, including any juvenile detention center time. You do have the right to appeal your guilty plea. Uh, your attorney must file a written notice within 30 days and a plea of guilty is subject to a showing of good cause uh, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 81429 and then the appellate courts will determine whether your application is granted. If you're just appealing the sentence I've just imposed and not the guilty plea, your attorneys must file that notice of appeal within 30 days, serve the written, as, written notice of that appeal upon the county attorney and, and file the same with the clerk of court together with evidence of such service upon the county attorney and you must promptly mail or deliver an informational copy to the Iowa Attorney General. The service and the filing of a written notice of the appeal and the time of manner just specified as jurisdictional and a failure to comply with such requirements shall be deemed a voluntary waiver by you of your right to appeal. You may be entitled to court appointed counsel to represent you on an appeal Mr. Goodell in uh, preparation of a transcript of the proceedings uh, that we've had in this court at state expense. Judgment accordingly, minimus accordingly, bond and appeal is hereby fixed the amount, um, no bond. Council, do we need to make a record on anything else? Nothing else I have to make a judgment. Wish you luck, Mr. Goodell, and help everybody else uh, in this room can heal as well. We'll close the record.